talk about uh, the resurrection of Jesus and obviously about my resurrection, about your resurrection. And tonight I plan uh, to have our part one because this topic is very, very complicated and difficult. And I would like to share with you that uh, this actually sermon is re a, a result of my class, which I took two years ago. This class was titled uh, uh, Sufferings, Death and Resurrection. Uh, we, you know, were uh, very nice students. We had a joke. Well, since it's a very difficult class, we, will we actually hope we will suffer a little bit and uh, will not die in order to be resurrected. So yes, I survived the class, but actually the text which we uh, took and uh, contemplate on, it was really, really difficult. So I plan to cover at least partially uh, the beginning of this text. And then uh, in two weeks, we will uh, continue thinking about that. Now I have a question. Are you familiar with this gentleman? Who is this? We only see you. I don't see him. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, let me. Uh, oh, okay. No, no. I, I, I just had to click. Uh, you know, firm enough. Okay. Are you familiar with this gentleman? Ben Frank. Yes. Okay. You, you're familiar with this guy. And uh, if you look at this uh, portrait, it's much better. Uh, yeah. I, I would say more recognizable. And when you look at this portrait, it has even Franklin at the very bottom. So we are familiar with this gentleman and we love uh, to meet him like this, right? Uh, now, uh, probably you know uh, this text, probably not. Likely you know that. Uh, we need a volunteer to read it. <coughs> The body of Ben Franklin printer, like the cover of an old book, its contents torn out and stripped of its lettering and gilding lies here. Food for worms, but the work shall not be lost for it will be as he believed, appear once more in a new and more elegant edition, corrected and improved by the author. Uh, if I'm correct, uh, looks like he wrote this text uh, when he was a young gentleman. He was preparing for his death. Some people say it was just a joke. Sometimes uh, people say he was very serious about that. Uh, we don't know for sure. But uh, what can you say about this text? <coughs> what do you think about that? I think he believed in the resurrection. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yep. <coughs> he believed in God. Yeah, and you may say he was a member of some secret societies. Uh, we, we are not sure what he believed in, but <laughs> what I see here he understood that it would be a very appropriate idea to compare himself with a book, right? And uh, as you can see, um, do you have old books, by the way, at home? Yes. Yes, very old books. And yes. uh, sometimes you just try to open those books and what do you see? The pages which are torn. And here uh, at the library, you may go and uh, you may uh, look at the very, very old books, you know, which were used by our pioneers, uh, you know, uh, more than 100 years ago. And when you open such books, it's very challenging to turn pages because they just, you know, uh, they uh, are very old and uh, they can be broken very easily. So. Actually, this is was uh, it was his idea. This is uh, this was his idea to compare uh, this body, which is dead, with an old book, and then at the end he says there is the author, which will make the new edition.
And here is our biblical text to study this uh, evening. Uh, but before we study the text, it's, it text itself, we have uh, 2 Corinthians 4.16, uh, which provides the context to our study. Uh, and I definitely need uh, someone to read this verse for us. Who can help us, please? Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. All right. Uh, is this something which is relevant or not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Eli, why are you laughing? <laughs> Well, if it's not relative, relevant, what are we doing here? <laughs> okay, but but uh, frankly, uh, you know, uh, if you ask, uh, for example, uh, my son who is ten years old, uh, he, he wouldn't he wouldn't say it's too relevant. Although I praise God for that, he uh, was really concerned about uh, death, and I remember he was five years old. And we were driving near a cemetery, and he would say, oh, graves, so many people died, so bad. And he, he was sitting as he was, you know, 80 years old and contemplating, oh, people died. And we would say, oh, David, don't worry. Jesus is with us. He will resurrect us. So uh, I, I, I really appreciate uh, those thoughts, which actually the Holy, Holy Spirit sent to his heart but uh, for now ask him about death oh come on it's not that relevant ask another son who is four years old uh, he is not concerned about that at all and you know as for me what i can tell you uh, i remember when we moved to bering springs i made an appointment uh, with my new dentist and my wife did the uh, same uh, thing she had an appointment and they said, we need about 30 minutes uh, to check everything, you know, your teeth. And as for your husband, we need about one hour. And she said, why? <laughs> and they said, because he is more than 40 years old. And I said to myself, congratulations. I, I achieved, you know, my next level when my wife needs 30 minutes and I need one hour. <laughs> So Paul says very explicitly, our outer man is decaying and our dentists are celebrating. The older <laughs> man, you know, <laughs> yes, what it says. Uh, the, the dentists and other <laughs> doctors, they like old people because actually uh, my dentist was <laughs> very, very sincere. Uh, I, uh, I had uh, a very good friend, uh, she was 70 something years old, and she said, oh, you know, young people are very weak today and their health is really bad. As for me, she said, she was 73, I believe. She said, well, uh, yesterday I visited my dentist first time in my life and my dentist was Aww. brutally sincere. He said, I'm very glad she is a unique person. Otherwise, I would be jobless. <laughs> so uh, we see here that Paul is uh, telling us his sermon, his message is uh, placed on this background. We are decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. And now here is our text. So let's read. Uh, Pam, would you start, please, and then Eli, and maybe David can continue. So let's read our text. And this is actually the text which we studied. Uh, we spent uh, many, many weeks, and it's really complicated. However, this is actually Paul's sermon to us. Let's try <laughs> to understand what he meant here. So let's, uh, let's begin reading. And I ask Pam, would you please uh, start for us? We know that if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed, in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven. 
Thank you very much. Eli, would you continue reading, please? Inasmuch as we, having put it on, will not be found naked. For indeed, while we are in this tent, we groan being burdened because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life. Thank you very much. David, would you please continue? Five, five. Yes, five, five and six. Now he who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave to us the spirit as a pledge. Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Thank you very much. And now, uh, who, who can continue reading? Probably Tatiana, would you read the two more verses for us, please? I see five, five and five, six. <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, I have five, seven, and eight on my screen. You have five, five, and six? Yes, I think it's not. A, okay, there we go. All For right. we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. All right, thank you very much. And now let us go verse by verse and let us try to understand what actually Paul meant. And I can tell you up front, uh, we had to write a paper on this. And I wrote a paper. And at the end of my uh, paper process, actually, I understood what Paul meant. And I read my paper and I said to my wife, now I have another task. I have to understand what I actually wrote there. So my explanation was even more complicated than Paul's words. Anyways, let's try. And it's challenging, but I believe very relevant because especially like i said after 40 you know you think about your death uh, more and more often okay now uh one more time let's read five one and two and now we need volunteers who didn't read uh, please read these two verses for us yes please i can read them for we know that if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed, in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from Thank heaven. Thank you very much. And here I highlighted, in my opinion, important words. At least I actually used those words as keys in order to understand what Paul is telling us. And the first word is tent. Tent. What is tent? What can you say about a tent? Temporary. Temporary. Uh, do you like uh, camping? How, how, no. how? Yeah. <laughs> You're saying yes? No, when no, what, what was it no, last time? Like it. Yeah. Sorry? Well, our family loves camping. Okay. What, 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 when was the last time when you went to a forest? Uh, last summer in June. Okay. Did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah. Uh, no rain? Yeah, we were blessed. We didn't have any rain. At least, yeah, we didn't. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any rain last year. The year before, we got rain really badly. <laughs> okay. I remember and, uh, we went, uh, it was New York Upstate. We went to a forest and... Uh, it was a big mistake. It, it was actually the lack of experience. When you go uh, to, you know, a forest near New York, what happens actually uh, when you have a weekend, many people from New York and majority of them are immigrants, they come to those campsites. And you can imagine it, it was just amazing. Our experience was just I, I cannot explain what we experienced. Anyway, I understood that uh, my wife was a very strong lady in terms of sleeping. She didn't care. As for me, I took uh, some sleep aid and, uh, and before we actually went to sleep, uh, when we arrived, it was Friday. Um, uh, my wife wanted uh, us to tarp our tent. So we did that. And then 
it was a terrible, terrible, terrible storm during the night. And it was silence because typically, you know, when people drink supposedly juice, actually it's prohibited to drink alcohol and they come, you know, having bottles with juice, many, many bottles with juice. And then they drink this juice and they become extremely, you know, merry and you understand. So they just put whiskey in those bottles and they have fun, but it, they didn't drink anything. They actually uh, hid in their tents because it was a terrible storm. And I'm glad my wife asked me uh, to tarp our tent. And I remember during this night, it was first time in my life, uh, typically, uh, actually, uh, when you have the storm, uh, when, you, when you have some really, really, uh, like big lightning, it lasts just one second less, right? But it was like during a day. And actually the sound of the thunder was, you know, sometimes it will, you know, I would say maybe for 30 seconds or like that. I never heard anything like that. Uh -huh. Anyways, I remember um, in the morning, they were actually people were wet. As for us, praise God, we were dry. And I remember two Korean guys, it, it's just amazing. They actually unzipped their tent and the uh, water just burst uh, from this tent from inside. So <laughs> it, it would be better to stay outside because the tent was full of water. You know? <laughs> This is actually, this is what it was. And now let's go back to our text. For we know that if the earthly Paul says ten, who would compare, you know, uh, his or her body with a tent? No, I believe my body is almost holy. This is me. But Paul says, no way, it's a tent. And this tent is, like you said, temporary. And if you go camping, you have to be prepared. It could be wet. And when you call then to the company which produced uh, this pen, typically they say, oh, did you, did you read the, this fine print? We always say, no, 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 no way. It's not waterproof. Oh, you believe this advertising? No, no, it was just an ad. The tent is the tent. And then we have a contrast, right? And what is the contrast? Uh, we have uh, something in green. And it says, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. <clears throat> now, let's imagine if your roof is, uh, you know, new, if your building is built, uh, you know, properly, what would you think during this thunderstorm? <laughs> Your protection. Uh, we are protected. We are completely protected and we just don't care. You know, big thunderstorm, one hour, three hours, especially if you have a building and you know, you're sitting on the fifth floor. Who cares actually? Well, maybe people in the basement, they should care about that. But I'm in the building and actually everything is fine. So we have these two categories. First of all, and uh, I'm trying just to compare what is obvious. The tent is temporary. The building is not. Uh, the building is something which lasts uh, for a long time. And then for indeed in this house, we, <clears throat> what, what does it mean grow? Could you explain this verb, please? When you're in pain. When you're in pain. You're longing for something. Okay. So it's it's uh, obviously not about a new car, right? <laughs> it, it's about something which actually disturbs me. And we actually, we groan. And look at this. We groan longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven. 
So uh, the main uh, the main idea here is to uh, we grown actually, and we grown uh, be because of this obvious reason. And now let's uh, look at uh, verses three and four. In as much as we having put it on, will not be found naked. And this is something which I would like to discuss in two weeks with you. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, we we having put it on will not be found naked. Wait a minute. We will have our new garments, which is actually according to Paul, according to this context, our new building. But it's possible to be found naked. Well, we'll, we'll think about this. And then he repeats something one more time. For indeed, while we are in this, again, he says, and he repeats, we groan again, groan, being burdened because we do not want to be unclothed by, but to be clothed so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life. Now, as you can see, the main problem of Paul is this groaning. And uh, what is the main problem? Uh, for we know that if we, uh, the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, I have no idea uh, why he says if. Actually, I would say when. Uh, when is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And now, uh, the important part, for indeed in this house we grow, and this is our problem, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven, uh, here is our uh, groaning or groan, uh, stenadzo, stenadzo. And uh, Tatiana knows uh, there is a very similar Russian word, uh, stenak, yes, uh, stenadzo. Uh -huh. And I like this definition. Look at this to express oneself involuntary in the face of an undesirable circumstance. You see, like I said, it's not about a new car. Uh, you, Pastor? yes, yes, sure. Um, this word stenazo is from uh, the same place that we get stenosis from. Uh -huh. Stenosis. Uh, we have lots of different types of stenosis. We have um, capillary stenosis. We have liver stenosis. We have heart stenosis. So anyway, it's pretty common. Yep. Yep, and uh, Paul says there is a problem. Uh, I have a question. Paul says, Paul, we know that if the earthly tent, this verse uh, was just read, is our, uh, our house is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So why then uh, do we actually groan? Is death bad for Paul? This is the first question which we have to answer. Is that bad for Paul? What do no. you think? I, no. You I say think... no. All right. Let's read a few verses. Let's uh, ask Paul, although he is dead, but he still can answer, you know. Okay. Who can read for us his first answer? Is that bad? No. Oh, yes, uh, please read, read this for us. But I am hard pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ, for that is very much better. What does it mean to depart? Leave. Yes, uh, Paul doesn't want actually to continue his earthly path. And if you remember, the prophets uh, actually predicted that he would be arrested and killed in Rome. And what did he say? Leave me alone. I want to go and to die. And uh, he had a uh, certain reason uh, to die. Uh, not only because uh, he, he just uh, was too brave, but al although he was, uh, he actually, he got tired. He was uh, really injured and uh, his life was difficult. And he understood that as soon as he dies, uh, from the moment of his death to the moment of his resurrection, it will be less than one second. Boom! And he is with Christ. And then another thing, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.8, we are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body. So 
uh, the death is not a problem for Paul. It's still a problem for me. Frankly, I don't want to die. And even when I read, you know, it's your tent, uh, you have something better, you have a building. Well, uh, I have to pray about that. But Paul says this is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem, death, is not a problem for Paul. But the internal conflict is the problem. Why? Because Paul says it's better for you if I stay with you. But it's better for me if I go. And obviously, when we die, uh, boom, one second and we are resurrected. But what would our relatives say? And here is our, uh, our conflict. And definitely, it's a big issue. Now and not yet. Now we have this stand, not yet. We don't have uh, this building, but it's promised. And uh, what Paul essentially says, here is my interpretation. You may live the bad life you may live the good life. You may, you may be poor, you may be rich. You may be weak, you may be strong. However, nobody can escape this tension. Uh, while we uh, are living here, we actually have this tension. Even the one who believes in Jesus, we have this tension. We know, actually, technically, it's better to die and to be with Jesus. But uh, this tent uh, is our current reality. And this tension actually creates, most probably this is what creates this groaning. You may be poor, you may be rich. Uh, probably <laughs> I shared this story with you, maybe not. Uh, but it was, uh, it was in real life. A friend of mine actually um, installs furnaces and uh, ACs. And uh, he actually works with uh, very, very wealthy people. He works with people uh, who earn uh, just millions, millions, uh, and sometimes billions of dollars. And uh, he installs very expensive systems in very expensive uh, houses. And once he said, I was just shocked because his client was 30 something years old and he was a billionaire. So can you imagine, this is good, you know, you're 30 something years old and you're a billionaire. And once this guy had a severe heart attack and it was the second one. How many heart attacks do people typically survive? One. Nice. Like uh, what I have heard, uh, maybe it's just, uh, maybe it's not true, but typically uh, uh, people survive two and the third one is the last one. Oh. And actually this a friend of mine who uh, installs those systems, he said, I, I was just shocked because he went uh, to uh, continue his work and somehow they allowed him, they were having a party. And at the same time, he was working because the house was huge, enormous, and it was possible to work. And they wanted to finish the project as soon as possible. He was installing something new. And he said it was a huge mansion and it was a main road uh, to this mansion. And when he arrived, he saw one Lexus another Lexus, another Lexus, one block of Lexus cars. He, I don't remember how many, like maybe 20, maybe 50, they were parked. And this guy invited <laughs> all his relatives and gave keys to each one. He said, <laughs> guys, I love you. I want you to know I love you. So when he felt real death, he wanted his relatives to remember that <laughs> he loved them because he understood this billion or seven or ten billion dollars. I don't know how much he had, but it doesn't save. And when actually he understood that he was located right near his grave, he said to himself, maybe it's time to do something good for my relatives. And this is what he did. And this is what I'm saying. You may be poor, you may be rich, but you see, unfortunately, death is near us 
and we have this tension. We don't want to die, but Paul says it's better. And that's why we groan because they actually, uh, if it's better to die, friends, who wants to die this night? According to Jewish tradition, righteous Me? people die on Sabbath. No, no, I don't accept. No, 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 it's a bad joke, Eli. What will we no, do next I'm, Thursday? You don't, you don't understand. My <laughs> whole life I grew up with my father saying, I'm gonna kill you. So I never knew how long I was gonna last anyway. So, so he did attempt to kill me a couple of times, oh. and and you know, uh, it, death is not doesn't sound so bad to me. I would oh. rather be with Jesus any day than to be in this world to suffer. All right, but I this... have no family. Yeah, I have no family. My, I have one sister that doesn't talk to me. My daughter, I don't know where she is. I'm totally alone, and you know what? I would rather be able to see Jesus I would rather be able to see his his perfect creation his um his face his love than to I feel like I'm struggling all the time in prayer to I ask him to reveal himself to me to help me get close to him this is my constant battle is to try to understand him to read the bible to understand what he's saying to understand his ideas and his ways. And that's why I'm taking the Hebrew because I want to know what he says. I want to be close to him. Okay. It's very great, difficult great. But, to achieve it. Yes, but we, we, we do not allow you to die this night, you know, because next Thursday we scheduled another Hebrew lesson and you actually <laughs> didn't report your homework. So... <laughs> I, but, I didn't find my homework. I, but but, but uh, I, I see uh, I see one one more participant wants to comment uh, just uh, very quickly. What I see that Eli actually shares pretty similar experience. What Paul is talking about this tension, right? Okay, yes. Uh, one more comment. Right. You think I'm the one with a comment? I don't know. I can't see anybody else. No, I, it's me. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> okay. me. Okay. Okay, Tammy. Daniel, I wanted to say that I think this isn't necessarily discussing death. It's this constant, what, what Eli's describing, I think every Christian who is truly wanting to be with uh, Jesus has this tension in their lives. You know, we have this body, it is decaying. We know it. We want to have that perfect relationship with Jesus. We want to be with him. We long to be with him. And that's why we groan or, you know, because we have that intense desire to be close with him, to be with him and not be separated in this way. You know, we can pray, but it's not, I mean, you know, it's like, it would be like if your husband was gone, you know, you would intensely feel it wanting to be with them. And yet we have to struggle in this life with this body. And yes, it may include death, but I don't know that it does necessarily include death. It's just an actual intense desire to be with the one we love. Yes, yes. And, and uh, basically, the, uh, my suggestion would be uh, likely this is what produces our gro groaning. That, that's why we groan, right? We're groaning. Yes, because, I think. You know, we have this conflict. We want to be like Christ, yet we have this flesh that is totally antagonistic. Yep. <laughs> yep. You know, and now, now, and we don't oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yes, yes, yes. Abhor the garment spotted by the flesh. Yeah, who, who was it that said, abhor the garment spotted by the flesh? James. James? Yeah, our body wants to kill us. It wants us to be dead, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you know, we have this spirit that is not Christ. I mean, it, we're, you know, that we have uh, inherited that, um, is not Christ and we have to struggle against it every day. And I've heard my husband say over and over again, you know, I just wish this was over and that we could be with, you know, Jesus. And I understand that struggle, you know, and I think most of us do. And, and it's because we believe in Jesus, you know, the earthly things we live here, but it's just not really our desire to be a part of it. Right. Right. Yeah. And now I would suggest uh, to look uh, from uh, uh, Paul's uh, perspective, from his experience, and I believe he 
knew uh, the Tanakh, uh, the Old Testament, uh, he knew it very well. And I actually, when I worked on my paper, I suggested that he made some allusions to very important things. Uh, number one, uh, Genesis uh, chapter 18, verse one. Now the Lord appeared to him, to Abraham, by the oaks of Mamre, while he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. So what we know for sure, we know that patriarchs actually, they dwelt in, in the tents. And uh, we know that Abraham uh, was actually, uh, he, he was not a city person. Uh, we know that his, uh, he, we know that uh, his son and his most likely uh, grandkids, they didn't have uh, permanent houses. And what is really interesting for now, I'm studying uh, ancient Israel and uh, many archaeologists uh, who believe in God, they come to the conclusion that it's very possible that uh, when Israelites entered Canaan, they didn't occupy the cities. For decades, they still, maybe for centuries, they still uh, were living in the tents. And I heard, uh, I read actually about one interesting idea that in Canaan, uh, they were new uh, types of settlements and they were like houses, but uh, the houses were, uh, were actually creating like a circle. And uh, those houses uh, looked very uh, uh, similarly to a number of tents, like encampment, all right? And uh, those archaeologists say, it looks like those people uh, first lived in the tents and then started building houses uh, like uh, it was an encampment. And they say, it could be that Israelites, you know, did that. Anyways, what we see, we see that initially Israelites, Abraham and his kids, they lived in the tents. And then we can also see that the, then the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting saying, and then uh, we do not need the rest of the verse because we need to concentrate on the tent. So we see that patriarchs, they dwell in tents and the Lord dwells in the tent with them. And why is it important? Actually, this tent is not something which is the goal, which is good or whatever. But actually those tents, they demonstrate that actually Abraham is traveling from his uh, uh, hometown. He is traveling to Canaan. Israelites, they are traveling uh, from Egypt to the uh, promised land. And the Lord is traveling with them in the tent of meeting. Uh, what we see here is this movement. So, yes, it's very upsetting when I get, you know, one problem, another problem, here problem, there problem, computer sonogram, you know, one doctor, another doctor, we're getting old. Well, I, I hate to say we. Uh, previously, I would, you know, side mostly with young people. Now they started saying, oh, you're too old to, to sit with us and to participate in our small group. Well... Anyways, uh, we have a good company here. <laughs> but uh, on the one hand, we see our bodies are getting old. On the other hand, if we compare them with tents, it's not only about the idea it's temporary, but it's about the way. It's about the traveling to, uh, to another reality. Abraham left his a town, a town which he lived in, uh, actually uh, Israelites left Egypt and they were traveling towards better things. And when we see that Paul compares our bodies with the tents, it's a very obvious hint that we are traveling. We are not here forever. And then uh, you see earthly tent is uh, scanners. Uh, in Russian, uh, they have skinnier. Uh, the uh, word which actually 
uh, is uh, dedicated specially for God's uh, tent. And then uh, we have another important thing, for we know that if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. And I would like to... <clears throat> yes? A comment? Oh, someone, I, I thought someone said something. Uh, okay. And we have something from 1 Kings 8.13. Uh, this is uh, what Solomon actually said. I have surely built you a lofty house, a place for your dwelling forever. What is that? Hmm. Uh, typically we think, okay, it was an earthly temple, the earthly temple, but what did he say? He said, for your dwelling forever. Basically, they believed that God would not depart from there, and actually, I believe that uh, they could not imagine that it would be exiled, that Nebuchadnezzar would come and to destroy everything. But what we see here is we have the permanent building. And actually, this permanent building was the place where God of Israel dwells, and as we can read, forever. So before, we had those tents as symbols of traveling, of our way to the better reality. And now we have this permanent building, which is not just a building, which is the building. This is the temple where the Lord dwells. So the idea, and actually this is what I suggested in my paper, and I was not stoned by my professor for that. I said that the deep idea here is the tents symbolize actually the tents of Israelites and they're traveling to better reality. And the building which Paul is talking about symbolizes our final destination when we arrive to the new Jerusalem and dwell with God and there is no temple there because God is our temple and entire uh, actually, although, you know, there are some visions, there will be the temple I, I do not want to uh, discuss this too much, but what we see there, this is our permanent settlement in heavens, this new Jerusalem. So when Paul says, now we are in tents, and then we have the building, I suggest Paul is talking about traveling, and now we actually are going toward, toward our final destination, which is new Jerusalem, which God promised to us. And then, Pastor? yes, yes, sure. I think um, another factor in this could be that, you know, when um, Paul and John talk about Jesus, they talk about, they say that, that he skenade with us. Mm -hmm. And we know that, so he was here temporarily and then he went to heaven. So we can also take example from that. Yes, uh, a man, and uh, that's why, that, yeah. It doesn't say he menoed with us, it says he skenade with us. Right, a and this is, this is my last verse for tonight. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. So here we see that actually Jesus solved this tension already. And how can we avoid or get rid of this groaning? How can we enjoy ourselves? Here, Paul says very clearly, uh, we uh, might no longer live for ourselves, but for him. In other words, this is what Eli said, when we allow him to dwell in us, we actually have this amazing experience of the new building right on this earth. And when we open the words uh, of Benjamin Franklin, the body of Benjamin Franklin, printer 
like the cover of an old book, its contents torn out. And interestingly, Paul uh, uses same uh, metaphors, torn, and uh, stripped of its lettering and gilding, lies here food for worms, but the work shall not be lost, for it will, as he believed, appear once more in a new and more elegant edition, corrected and improved by the author. So what we see here, we are traveling, we are uh, actually heading towards our final destination, which is the building. And what is really important, as Eli said, Jesus is with us and he showed the way to us how to go and where to go. But the question is still not answered. And we have uh, uh, these uh, metaphors of naked people or dressed people, and we have to investigate what is going on there in those verses. So in two weeks, we will try to answer this question. Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for these very difficult, but at the same time comforting words. Thank you very much for Apostle Paul, who many times met Jesus in person, in visions, who understood how precious his uh, sacrifice was. And we thank you for his sermon. Uh, because of that, we have great comfort. We understand that we are traveling, that there is the final destination which is waiting for us. And we thank you. We thank you for Paul's uh, letters, for Yeshua, Jesus, who died for us. And we thank you for this way. We hope to be resurrected and to see, first of all, you and each other in our new city, which you build forever. We ask, please bless us to overcome everything uh, which uh, bothers us, like anxiety, or maybe we can lose our faith due to circumstances. We want to believe in Jesus and keep traveling there. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you.